Kitco Mining special coverage of Fast Markets Lithium Supply and Battery Raw Materials is brought to you by Lindian Resources. Billions have been invested in the battery metal recycling sector. So how does the supply picture look? I am with Hans Eric Mellon. He is Managing Director at Circular Energy Storage. Hans, welcome to Kitco. Thank you so much for having me. Let's talk about uh, the supply picture. Um, you see some huge investments by Lifecycle and Redwood into the space. What's the supply picture look like for these companies? Well, first of all, the, we have seen investments all over the world. Then we have actually seen even even more investments in, in other parts of the world, uh, in particular in China and South Korea. Um, so th there is a huge demand for, 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 for material. And in terms of supply, I mean, it's been growing rapidly. Uh, uh, we talked about last year about um, a supply of around 600,000 tons of infeed of, of both end of light batteries and of production spread mm -hmm. uh, that is generated really through, through, through the, um, uh, I mean, when we are producing batteries. Um, what's important in, in the, when you look at that picture is that like two thirds of that is produced in China, basically both because of its, uh, its biggest EV sector or EV, EV market, which means that they, they, they place most electric vehicles uh, on, the, on the road, of course, and that's all to generate the end-of-life batteries, but primarily also because they are the largest producer of batteries, which means that in terms of production scrap, um, 75 to 80% of the scrap is really generated in, in, in China. Mm -hmm. um, but it's growing. Uh, we expect that about 2 million tons of uh, material will be available in, um, in, in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, but similarly, we have the same differences here. I mean, China is in both in terms of battery production, in terms of the use of batteries is growing faster than any other markets. So that's also where we expect to see, see most of it. Uh, help me with a misconception, though, Hans, because um, uh, when I look at it, I, again, I see these huge numbers that are being invested into these battery metal recycling companies and stuff like that. And granted, we're selling a lot of electric vehicles right now, but we're really just kind of at the start. I mean, they still have a small percentage. A lot of these vehicles are still new, and so they have to kind of run up their cycle right now as well, too. When I would be look at these people that are actually kind of building out these, you know, these uh, large... Uh, battery uh, metal recycling uh, companies, you, it, you would seem to look at it, it would seem like they'd be on the early stage. But you're saying, you know, in terms of the amount of scrap that is coming in from, you know, the uh, having to redo or remake these vehicles, they're still being able to find sufficient supply. I think supply will be a challenge oh, uh, for, uh, yes. absolutely. Uh, yeah. It has been a challenge for Chinese recyclers where we have a large oversupply of uh, or over capacity uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then um, that affects the margins of course for for, for the recyclers hmm. um, we see exactly the same thing happening in Europe and in North America if you look at recycling usually we, 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 we differ between pre-processing which means that you basically take scrap cells or, 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 or um, the scrap material and to turn it into an intermediary usually what we call black mass yes um, and then we have the actual material recovery side of it, mm -hmm. where, where you finally are producing an, an end product, uh, usually mm -hmm. something that would go back into the battery value chain. And um, we, we see investments in, in both of these parts, but when it comes to pre-processing, um, that is much less capital intensive. Um, we have several plants in both North America and in Europe that are already permitted, financed, and um, uh, and some of them, many of them already operating. And for, for a long time, we can't really see how they will operate at, at that scale that is uh, anticipated. For, um, and in terms of material recovery, that is a bit different because we, in terms of planned capacity uh, or analysis capacity, we will definitely see an over, uh, over capacity also in North America and in Europe. Now, these are huge projects so mm -hmm. we can expect delays we can expect also investments to not going through because over time it might be that we will see that 
uh, they won't be able to fill the capacities in the in, in the rates that was uh, anticipated. So that of course some of these projects will will fall off. But but definitely we um, we we think it will be a very um, a, a tough situation for for many, which means that recyclers really need to have some. Everything from from you know strong strong operations, of course, uh, but a uh, very good business model. And in terms of the, they really have to be clever in how they make money. So it really depends on also where they are in the value chain, whether this will be uh, successful or not. So that's why you see a lot of linkages right now, and there are a lot of companies that are in the battery metal recycling sector, kind of announcing that they have an arrangement with a so and so automaker, and I, I think of like Redwood uh, being Cis being tied up in Tesla. Yeah, and I, I, of course that's really really important. I mean, you you can only recycle what is there to recycle. That yeah. that is the simple principle. But I keep telling telling people this the very simple concept uh, over and over because. With many that are used in mining, it seems to seems to think that, that there is some kind of you know abundant material out there that just can be recycled. I mean, we we have had a narrative with we, we, basically it's based on that uh, recycling has not been happening. Mm. Uh, so I think everybody, for the, the public opinion, to to, to politicians, to, uh, and also in the industry, there is a perception that there are a lot of ba- batteries out there that is just sitting or laying waiting to to be recycled but that's not really the case um, so we are really of course it's really important to to have these uh, i mean feedstocks agreements with, with with the various players but what's also important is that the oems ideally I, oems should not be a great source of materials mm. um, because if they were that means that they had huge recalls a lot of warranty issues um which um, uh, hopefully it's not the case mm-hmm. um, because otherwise it's, it's you and I who owns our cars our, it's our batteries mm-hmm. and it's first when we, we, we the, the car is old enough to, to get to a car dismantler then it's a car dismantler that owns this, this battery so it's not really the, the Fords or the GMs or, or Teslas that uh, are um, uh, are always the actual source of the batteries but mm-hmm. of course it's I mean they, they the recyclers have to do whatever they can to mm-hmm. uh, to see to secure the supply so you have usually large feedstocks of like R&D batteries recalls um, but batteries that have been in testing facilities and everything so of course they are an important source of material I assume like consumer electronics which is uh, right now is just not a meaningful supply for these people but uh, in terms of the capital that they built out it is meaningful. It, uh, absolutely, it is. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's still actually the biggest, the biggest source of, of materials is really from consumer electronics. Yeah. Um, consumer electronics have uh, faster cycling rates, so we um, they come back faster uh, than than what the electric vehicles uh, mm. are and and will be we be doing. Um, so um, and also, I mean, we everybody having. And then a phone, we have a power bank or whatever. So, so I mean, there is also from a material standpoint uh, where you have a lot of much more cobalt usually in the uh, in consumer electronics, which is also important because, of course, where with higher value of the material, it's a little bit easier to to, to pull it in and to, to, to make it accessible for, for the recyclers. Uh, we've seen uh, the growth in uh, lithium iron phosphate uh, batteries, and then that's been to uh, reduce kind of the cost of the um, materials uh, that are going into it. Uh, we also even see that uh, some companies are projecting or look forward, they might be including uh, sodium ion batteries, which would even pump out the lithium as well. So what is the, the impact uh, for uh, going to be for the recyclers and how are they projecting out in terms of like the materials they can recover? Because if they're covering less, uh, you know, less valuable materials, I assume that's going to be trouble for the business models. So. Yeah, yes and no. Uh, it's, it's just like I mentioned about uh, LCO batteries or I mean, the cobalt containing batteries in, in consumer electronics sector or for lead acid batteries, for instance. I mean, of course, for always, any kind of recycling, it is it's a very valuable uh, or it's a beneficial if you have the, everything is really paid by the downstream. That you that you can that then you can really pull in the material into yeah. into the recycling. That basically 
any of us could go, go out, you know, and, and, and pick materials in, mm. in the streets, essentially, and, and, and get paid for, for that. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that, that it's like aluminum cans, uh, uh, could work, that somebody that has not a contract with anyone could, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, just go out and pick it. So, of course, it's a, from a collection point, that's important. But when it actually reached the recycler, I'm not so worried about, uh, especially not the month for, for lithium iron phosphate. <laughs> um, so, so first of all, when we discussed uh, profitability in the recycling sector, I mean, recycling is usually always profitable. It's yeah. the only matter of where do you get your money from? Do you get it upstream or, or downstream? Somebody in some way has to pay for it. Mm. Uh, there is really no option that the, these batteries can go anywhere else. They have to, they have to be recycled. So, so the re recycler is obviously in a, in a favorable position uh, as, as such. But then you're, you're right that, of course, if we have these materials that, that can basically pay for, for the actual process, then it's much easier. So I think for lithium ion phosphate, we are in a situation that the lithium ion phosphate in North America and in, in Europe it's big enough to be a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have it in forklifts, we have it in ESS, um, we, we have it in power tools, and, uh, and also now increasingly in cars. But still the volumes are very low. So, so when this is generated, we don't have any dedicated processes for LFP. So for that reason, it is a problem. And unfortunately, the, the problem is not big enough yet to really find a solution. Mm -hmm. uh, While well in China, where, where LFP have a I mean, that's where LFP is made. Uh, that's where you have large volumes of it. Um, it has also, for also been, I mean, maybe not the problem because it's always been a value positive chemistry, but it's, uh, it's only a few that really been able to, to do that. Yeah. So what I, I would say is it's about volume, yeah. that you need a lot of volume, obviously, to, to have dedicated processes to, to be able to make money from it. Yeah. Um, but, but then also, um, even if you would have a process where you have a negative value, yeah, I mean, that, then, that, then you have to charge upstream. And it's, it, it, it will still be profitable in that, in, that, in that regard. But then I think also people are forgetting really where the lithium carbonate price is today and compared to um, two or three years, uh, years ago. I mean, even if we have a downturn now the last six months, it is so much higher than what it used to be. And actually, even during those times, some recyclers could make money from it. So I'm not, I'm not really worried. Lastly, Hans, uh, you talked to uh, Company X or Company, I uh, talked to Battery Metal Recycler X, and then they will say they have the best technology or, the, you know, this is uh, groundbreaking tech that is actually going to help with recycling. Um, does the tech that is used by any of these companies really matter or is it kind of marginal, you would say, at the end? I mean, they're all aiming for higher recovery or they're aiming for uh, less waste, uh, less CO2 is, is going to be coming out of their process. Yeah, I mean, I think technology is really important because it's difficult. It is difficult to, 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 to recycle batteries. Yeah. Um, so, so the, the first thing with technology is that it has to work. Um, so I mean, there is yeah. um, in terms, the technology that is uh, you, you can rely on, um, which, uh, where you can have a high yield, um, which is uh, efficient to operate, so you have a low cost base. Th that, that's really important. Then if you have recovery rates of 80 to 90 uh, or 90 percent or uh, whatever, I mean, that is one part of the equation. But the equation is so much bigger than only the technology. Um, it's about where you are located, what kind of permits you have, um, it's what kind of end products uh, are you producing, um, what kind of volumes can you obtain, and, and what kind of customers can you attract with those kind of volumes. Because in the end of the day, it's really about um, how low cost do you have to process a material and how much can you make on, on the downstream. Uh, that will decide how much you can, you, you can pay for the material and if you can pay more than your competitors. Because I, I, I really see this as um, for the next 30 years, it's all about feedstock. Most probably in the next, uh, I don't know, I mean forever. It, it, recycling is about getting feedstock. Mm. And that's really where it's different 
to, uh, to, to mining. It's, it's also important to understand and also re referring to, to when we talked about LFP, that you basically have the same payables when you're mm -hmm. buying material as when you are selling it. As, so um, it's, um, you're not, you don't own your material. As, so, so, so for that reason, it's, um, it's really important that you, you have this a really efficient process because in a, in, in a situation where, where we have a lot of competition, which is exactly the situation which we are going into right now, um, you need to pay for, for that material to be able to, to attract that fifth time. Hans, thanks for speaking with Gecko. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Yeah. My name is Mike McRae here with Kiko Mining at Fast Markets 15th Looking Supply and Battery Raw Materials show here in Henderson, Nevada. Kitco Mining special coverage of Fast Markets Lithium Supply and Battery Raw Materials is brought to you by Lindian Resources.